really, really excited uh, about the weekend that we had. Uh, not only the opponents we beat, but the, um, the challenge of that schedule that we had to play. I don't, I don't know that I've ever done that. We played three times in less than 24 hours, with the last two being, you know, Power Five schools. And but our kids um, got better and better as the weekend went along. It's a, it's a veteran bunch and a tough bunch, and uh, some really quality wins. And so uh, now glad to be back in Diddle. Uh, I don't think we go on the road again till. Uh, almost October, and so uh, we're excited to be in Diddle. We've got a big week this week hosting our first tournament. Um, you know, we've got an Ole Miss team coming in here on Friday night who's undefeated uh, and playing very, very well out of the SEC, and so we're looking forward to the challenges that this week brings. So, questions? Uh, Coach, you know, this is a group that's played together, you know, for quite a while now. Did you learn anything new about them, you know, through the first handful of matches? <laughs> Well, the first thing I learned is they are human uh, because the thing that I've always loved about this group is they show up ready to play every night. And I don't think we did a very good job of that on Friday against Lipscomb. Um, we, the first set against Lipscomb was one of the poorest sets that I've seen this group play. And uh, so I wasn't very happy with how we came out. It's very uncharacteristic of this group. Um, but you know, they responded in true fashion. Um, you know, after that match, I didn't really get in them. I didn't, you know, anything like that. I literally just sat down in front of them and said, hey, guys, I'll be honest with you, tonight was pretty disappointing because it's just not what our program is about. And uh, it was kind of like when your parents, you know, the worst thing your parents can do is tell you they're disappointed in you, right? And so, you know, I, I kind of went that direction. And boy, did they respond on Saturday with some of the best volleyball we've played. Yeah, so far so good. Um, you know, we're treating this week a little bit differently. We gave them, you know, we got a holiday today as well. And, um, you know, I'm doing some things that I haven't done in the past because this is unlike any year we've ever been through. Um, I, I really believe it's going to be about who can hold it together in late October. And um, so, for instance, today, you know, all of our vets, all of our kids that, that logged a lot of minutes this weekend, uh, we gave them an extra day off today and just brought in our young kids and uh, and got in the gym and did some skill work and things like that. And then we'll we'll all get back together and get ready for this weekend starting tomorrow. But just some additional rest for their bodies, just some additional rest for their minds. And uh, if we stay fresh, you know, we got better from week one to week two. And I think it's tough as a coach to balance it because you're so tempted to want to get in the gym and continue to work on volleyball related things, but you have to balance out trying to keep them fresh mentally. And, and that's what this week's been about so far. <clears throat> coach, what is it like um, to start off the season, you know, all on the road, as mm -hmm. opposed to play before this mm -hmm. uh, at home, and now finally playing at home? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been, to be honest, it's been great to be on the road for two weeks. Uh, I've always liked being on the road early in the first couple of weeks. We, we typically never try to host in the first couple of weekends because I think that that's really important time together uh, as, a, as a team and as an entire volleyball family because, you know, when you get in two a days in preseason, the only time you're together, it's always volleyball, volleyball, volleyball. And so as strange as it sounds, a four or five hour bus ride is is really welcome early in the year because it just allows us to connect on a different level and um, and you know early in the year you're fresh you're just ready to play so it doesn't wear on you too much and so uh, it's actually been really great to be on the road together but now after a couple weeks of it uh, boy it sure is nice to know we're going to be in Diddle Arena for a while. Yeah, um, the biggest difference from week one to week two for us is how much better we serve the ball. Uh, if you've heard me talk, you hear me talk a lot about serving and the impact that it has on the game. And, um, you know, Hallie Shelton is a high-level server. Ashley Hood is a high-level server. But I've talked and talked about we need six kids that walk back there and put pressure on. And this weekend, if you look at the numbers, we had six kids that went back there and put pressure on. And that's why you saw the dominant performances against quality opponents because – you know, when only Hallie and Ashley Hood are scoring, you score in those two rotations, and then for the next four, you give up points. 
and then you got to get them back and then you give them up and all of a sudden you look up and it's 20 all when you've got six people that are back there that are a threat to score points for your team it makes a huge difference and this weekend Logan Kale and Nadia Judene and Paige Brick all served the ball great and boy it really makes us a problem I think our opponents you know you, our goal is to hold teams under 200 hitting percentage wise and for this weekend our three opponents hit uh, 115 and they're three high level opponents and it's because of what we did at the service line where do we have to get better uh, we did we need more offensively from Katie Eisenbarger uh, Katie you know is hitting low 200s right now and she is a kid that hit over 400 for us last year and uh, she has not gotten out of the gate well offensively now having said that she had a terrific weekend blocking for us which is a really important thing but um, you know, we, meet, we need more from her offensively. It changes the look of our team when Katie plays better offensively. And so that'll be a big focus this week. And then, you know, Kaylin Jackson, again, talk about a kid that makes us difference when, different when she's rolling. And, uh, but she, too, had a really inconsistent weekend. She had a negative in the Wake Forest match and hit three or 400 against Kansas. And those matches were separated by a couple hours. And it wasn't really anything that the other team was doing. And so just need some of those kids to, to iron it out and be a little more consistent. But uh, otherwise, I'm a pretty happy coach right now. Yeah, well, we start with Samford. Samford is, um, you know, record-wise, they've struggled out of the gate, but it's so early, you don't have to worry about that stuff. Samford is a perennial NCAA tournament team, a perennial conference champion. I expect them to be right there in the mix again. Always a dangerous team to play. Um, but then, you know, Friday night's shaping up to be a big one. You know, we, we play an Ole Miss team that's undefeated, an SEC team coming to Diddle Arena. Um, you know, we, we, need to, we need to be the diddle arena that we've grown accustomed to lately when we play. Uh, it's a Friday primetime match. Um, you know, our kids will be fired up to be back in here playing against a high-level quality opponent, and it's yet another opportunity against a Power 5 school to, to go out and prove that we're one of the best teams in the country. And, um, and it's an opportunity for our fan base to come out and, and experience high-level volleyball and, and, and make this make Diddle Arena a really, really difficult to place to play. So we need them in here on Friday. It's going to be a good one. <clears throat> Well, it's always in the back of your mind, right? Like, you know, when you're, you're trying to stockpile quality wins to help your ability to get an at-large bid, we never skip steps. I mean, that's the first step to try to put ourselves in a position to get an at-large bid. And then, gosh, you hope by the end of the year we're in a position to, to be fighting for a seed again so we can put an atmosphere here in Diddle Arena. Um, so those things are always in the back of my mind as a coach. But, uh, I, you know, I don't, I don't think there's – I don't think there's a more cliche statement that's made in, in press conferences than coaches and players talking about taking it one game at a time. Like, I mean, how many times have you heard one game at a time? And you're, when I first got into coaching, you know, I walked in my office and I opened the drawer and there was a sticky note that said one game at a time. I think it's the first thing they teach you as a coach. But so it's such a cliche statement. But I, so I don't really want to say we take it one game at a time, but honestly, the success has been so outrageous for our program in the last couple of years that you can't spend your time worried about the big picture. It, like, it's impossible to live up to what this group has done the last few years. And so we really do have a great mentality of what's the next challenge? What is it? Who is it? Is it, is it simply being really locked in and being clean against the team we should win against? Is it you know, playing three games in 20, less than 24 hours? Is it winning on the road in a top 25 team? Is it playing an SEC team? Like, all those things, we try to take those individually and, and just make the most out of whatever that challenge is. And um, I, I, don't, I, I think we could drive ourselves nuts because it's such a weird, weird business. It's such a, you know, I was just talking to Jess before the press conference. It's so weird, a team that, that with this new transfer portal situation, a team that was – 
of no relevance last year can completely change themselves and be a high-level team this year. And so you just, you just have to keep moving forward. Um, <clears throat> my focus always this early in the year is about making our team better week to week. And if we do all those things, the rest of it truly does take care of itself. But I just won't, I'm not going to allow this group to only be focused on the end result because they've accomplished too much. They're too good a group of kids. And man, we're just going to enjoy this challenge week in and week out of being, you know, my favorite comment that I had from a player this week as I touch base with players at, on the way home on the bus and texting kids and all that. Uh, Nadia Judene sent me a text and we were talking back and forth about stuff and she said, I had a lot of fun this weekend. And to me, that hits the mark because you want those kids to be having fun while they're doing this, especially, you know, in a time when we're dealing with this pandemic and two seasons in one year. I think, I think it's incredibly important that these kids have a good time along the way and all that other stuff just weighs you down. Listen, um, I'm telling you, it's a story that won't be talked about all year because we have so many incredible veteran players. But we have a really special freshman class this year. Um, you know, I told you we only worked with the young kids today. And today was, today was more fun for me than beating Kansas or beating Wake Forest or winning that tournament. To, man, this is the part that gets my juices flowing. And our young players are talented and they're hungry and they're attentive, you know, it'd be easy for them with the roster we have to tune it out, right, this year because they know it's going to be hard to break into lineups. But these kids are, are sponges and they're learning and they're locked in. And it's my hope that we can get them some playing time because I truly believe these kids are going to develop into kids that can help us as soon as this year in situational opportunities. And so uh, I'm really, really proud of them. I, you know, I sat with a bunch of them on the bus and on the way home and talked to them as a group, those young kids, and just the look in their eye of, I think they're, I think they're blown away by how our program plays. Because as a freshman, you know, you think you know college volleyball when you come in and you see the things that we do every day working at a high level on the court. Uh, I think I've got their attention, maybe is a good way to say it. And they're all such great kids and talented kids and they're fun to work with every day.